a little bit older man, not really good looking, but he said, oh, I just come back to the BBW community. I've been out of the BBW community for a few years, but I've been in the amputee community. Oh, and he begins to tell me as how he's met all these amputees and how he enjoys fucking amputees. And there's a whole group, there's a whole big thing for amputees just like for BBWs. There is. Really? Yeah, there is. There's a whole big, and people would call it a fetish. I don't call, call BBW, liking a BBW a fetish. But I'm sorry, I think that liking an amputee is a fetish. Am I not right? Girls, what's your opinion? Well, uh, fetish or there, fetish. There, I, I don't like to call uh, BBWs a fetish, no, but most of the most of the modern world does. You're absolutely right. So anyway, there's it's a big thing to um, so people want to date. I amputees. went on to my favorite porn place, xhamster.com. Please send us money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love you, xhamster. Yay! We do. We do actually because we, we find all kinds of freaky shit on xhamster, except that when you search for limbless. No video for this query. <laughs> there is no limbless porn. But do you know there are actually people who desire to be an amputee? Yes. And they go through all this psychological stuff, and there are people that their their psychologists actually say, yeah, they'd be better if you take their leg off. I mean, and they, I read online, you know, I went through this whole thing, you know, I read this freaky shit. There was a guy There's, who froze his oh, yeah, leg in mm, dry uh, ice. With <gasps> dry ice, and then started smashing on it, yeah. trying to get it to shatter. Yeah, they or they try to damage their own limb enough so that the doctors will have to take their limb off. And then after their limb, I mean, I seen an interview on TV about it, and people envision it to the fact that it's you know one inch exactly below the knee, or one is two inches up and one is one inch up. I mean, these people envision this their whole they life. They know exactly where what that limb want, should not where be. Where they want. And a lot, they, it was on like a, a TV show a few years ago, and they actually finally, for the first time in their life, once that limb is gone, feel complete. Well, I have heard, I have I saw that same thing, but and I did a little research because that's what my nerd thing does, is it researches. Um, how can you stream? Um... <laughs> I have so many problems over here. I know. Uh, I um, I researched it some more, and there are some doctors who are beginning to believe that this is a version of fetus in fetu. That some of these people, uh, fetus in fetu, is where you reabsorb oh, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, like a, a twin. twin. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it presents as like nails and hair and teeth inside your liver or uh -huh. something weird like that. And there are some doctors who believe that. What this may be is basically phantom limb being caused by, you know, the DNA is ex an exact match because when you have a, an identical twin, it's an exact match. But it was never supposed to be a part of your body. It was supposed to be part of your twin's body. Wait, and so there may like be somebody that looks just like you, two arms, two legs, um, that that partial of that leg below the knee is was supposed not to be theirs. It's not yours. So there's a, like an electrical disconnect. Oh, wow. wow. There are some people that talk about it's a past life kind of thing where you had it k cut off when you were back then and your life was better for it or your life was different for it and yeah. it's when you died. It's a huge psychological I There was actually a movie. I just watched it um, a little while ago um, about a medical student who was date raped and got kicked out of her, got kicked out of the classes or schooling that she was doing and she got hired by this underground person who wanted to make her face look like Barbie's face, make her body and face look like Barbie's face, and uh, she got paid really big money for it, and uh, so she's just started doing that on the side, and she was like this doctor that wasn't really a doctor, and uh, but she would do these, you know, the people who want the actual piercings in their body so they can lace themselves up, right, yeah, and right, people who right. wanted uh, limbs removed, or... All those kinds of things. Body the modifications. Tongue, body, but that's it. Body. And there's that whole industry oh, as well, is which is fascinating. Whole, yeah. Or oh, like we the, saw the that implants. thing in Facebook. The, right, right. The, the, the circular acrylic Real implant thing. that people are doing right in their labia. I don't know. Oh, you real. see that, Michelle? Yeah, I think that's gross. Me too. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's real. I don't know. I just, I just I don't 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 know. Teeth. Yeah, they showed the bottom of the teeth and you the root. You could totally paint that into a piece of acrylic and people would think it's 
you yeah. know, whatever. Especially if, since we're only seeing a picture with them with their closed mouth, we're not seeing it in action. That's true. But I bet you could see it in action. Or YouTube. it could be photoshopped. Ah, or it could be photoshopped. I am like, yeah. I am like such still, a YouTube guru. Look on you, you look on YouTube. It's on there. Right? On number number two search Fuck engine you. in the in the world, I think. Yeah, you could see anything. So you could probably see somebody talking with that on YouTube and know that it's real. Yeah. I would hope so. I mean, I would hope you could, t well, I don't know, I just, <laughs> I, I got a friend of mine addicted to Once Upon a Time, and they have a <laughs> lot of computer graphics on that, and there was this one scene with this deer, totally CGI, and you could totally tell. Oh, well, so. Once Upon a Time in Wonderland is that way, it's oh, almost you, all you CGI, the whole thing. but they they don't try to, like, cover it up, they don't try to make it feel right. like it's real, they, they're actually, they're really playing up the whole absurdity of the the land that you're in because it's wonderland it's supposed to be absurd so i'm thinking if it's on youtube and it was a handmade video it's going to be really crappy cgi and then probably. you'll know for sure that it's probably not real you could but learn you never know. anything on youtube though yeah. you could learn anything i learned how to fishtail braid my own hair on youtube nice. you can learn anything when i was getting ready to do my little guy's halloween makeup i got on youtube because i used to do clown makeup and i knew there's a way you layered it and powdered it so you didn't um smear uh, smear and i couldn't remember so I got on YouTube. Yeah. I, I'm going to teach myself how to do the smoky eye on YouTube. Of course, that's going to be all alone by myself. Boyfriend's not even in California. He's in fucking Zimbabwe. Because like, I know the disaster. That's going to be the first five times I try it. Yep. Keep oh. poking your eye and all that. And oh, that. my God. I just learned just this year, well, just in 2013, how to put on eyeliner without getting it in my eyebrows. Really? Yes. She wears very little makeup. Very little makeup. Very rare. How the hell do you get eyeliner in your eyebrow? That's because what I, eyebrow. <laughs> I have it coming right at my eye. I'm going to take my glasses off for this. So I have it coming and I'm holding my thing down and I'm like, here you go. And I just, oh God, I can't do that. Right there. You're right <laughs> in the eyebrow. <laughs> and then I'll like, tell okay. you what the secret is. Hmm. The secret is to hold the brush straight and move your eye. Because that would be great, but that means I still have to get the brush at my eye. Oh, it's something going in your ah! eye. You can't yeah, say. I can't. Every makeup artist who's ever done my makeup, and because there's been a lot of them because I don't yeah. do my own makeup, I warn them, I'm a blinker and I move my head. And the last girl, our, uh, Lexi. Lexi, I warned her of that. She said, that's okay. And she grabbed me by the back of the head. Hello. Like that one. And then and she <laughs> just chased me down with the <laughs> eyeliner. But you know Finally, what? I couldn't go any further. Her makeup was phenomenal my, that day. Yeah, yeah it, it was. was. We're phenomenal. hiring her to do our makeup for... Did need uh, you unplug me when you get a chance. Oh, God. I know. Here, somebody talk to Michelle about something. Oh, so what? Let's introduce Michelle to our audience. Yes. Let's introduce Michelle to our audience. Hello. Hi, Michelle. Let me tell you a little bit about Michelle. Michelle's been in the community, the BBW community, not real long. When did I first meet you? Um, It'll be a year in December. Okay, December. We met at the Red Label Lounge. Yes. And Which is uh, where uh, BBW Club Las Vegas, Vegas holds is. their events. And um, I don't, we just started chit-chatting, and Michelle was... Amazed by you. Amazed by me. I was just saying you were introverted, and... But we had a great I, conversation, but go yeah. ahead. I, I was just amazed because you were just so bubbly and so accepting of yourself. And I was just finding out about the whole world of BBW. Um, they, what talk? Uh, what made you go to uh, BBW Club Las Vegas that night? Um, I had looked online and was talking to this one guy that was um, giving a sort of talking about accepting yourself as far as being a large size person. And I said, and he's in Canada. I said, well, do you know where I can find one in Vegas? Because I was looking. And um, he said, hang on, let me go and check it out. And he's the one that... Um, somebody from Canada to find you a place to go in Vegas. I was yeah, like, I love Canadians. Yeah. 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 the Canadians! <laughs> and um, his name's Neil, and he's really a great guy. And he is um, very supportive of the large size. Because he is also, and he just says, you know, we learn to accept ourselves. Was so. uh, BBW Nightclub Vegas your first time at a BBW event? Yes. And that's where you met. He walks in and meets Sweet me. So that's and then awesome. I meet you. He meets me. Sitting there. <laughs> a, and you that could that could have gone one of two ways. She I know. could have either converted her or scared her the fuck away. I was amazed. And I was like, yes, if she can, I can. So, but it took a while. It, you know, just but you know what? It, did not, it really did take you a while to jump in. I want to say she, when, when we were talking, because I think Mama was there at the time too. Yes. Okay, we, we were talking to her and talking about showing our arms and we talked yes. about the radio show. You see, she's got her, I'm working on her daughter. Her daughter's <laughs> been coming the last few dances and will not show her arms, so I'm working no. on her. But um, 
it did not, I want to give Michelle credit because it didn't take her long to jump in. The next dance, there she was, dressed pretty, ready to go. You know, like she's like, I'm taking this bull by the horn and I'm going to be involved. And you did. Yeah. And that's awesome. What? Wait a minute. I'm going to interrupt this go because I just picked up my phone to get off of X Hamster and scrolled down. It said, this is not a dating site. You must be willing to fuck ugly women at a moment's notice. Click here to view pictures. What? So, Wow. X hamster? It's a it's a what? Oh, it's an ad, ad on, on X, -hamster. X hamster. Okay. But you must be willing to fuck ugly women at well, a moment's notice. My picture notice. better not be on that site. Hmm. No. <laughs> subjective. Beauty is subjective. You're right. I'm clicking on it. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're willing to fuck uh, ugly women? No, because I am a kinkster and I totally want to see that girl's not ugly. No. Nope. Whatever. Yeah. See, that's because men think ugly women are easier. And fat women. Yeah, they think fat they women think are easier, women and it irritates the bejeebers. I'm not easy. Me. Any anybody that's different is easier because they're different. Right. And which a lot of different people are easier because they are different, and they have this attitude about themselves that they're different and they don't fit in, which is not true, because everybody else is just as freaky as you are. That's true. We're yeah. all freaks. And we're not all desperate. We're just enjoying ourselves. So tell us what being a part of the community, what it's done for you, what... Um, well, well, first, I want to I want to find out. So you, were you having an issue, self-image issue? Major self-image issue. Um, I've been married since I was 23. Mm -hmm. I'm 56. And um, before I had my child at 29, I was one of the thin bitches so um <laughs> with, as you skinny bitch. yes <laughs> so i don't condone that by the way so. no we're not okay. skinny haters okay unless okay. you look like skeletor and then you need no, a no, 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 no. no i was shapely but um so um what happened was is what this is say now four or five years ago he'd had an affair on me for two years that i didn't know of with a woman that he kept denying was just friends and um then said okay i'd like out of this relationship and um so, was he abusive, uh, yes. verbally abusive? Verbally and physically, yes. Oh. So um, the physical ended a long time ago after talking and counseling, but the physical, the verbal kept going. Yeah. And was it did it have to do with? Uh, oh, right the up the end. Yeah, the end. Like yeah, that's what yeah. happened. Was is at the end he says, you know, you really just let yourself go, and I'm tired of it, and uh, please leave. Was he a, uh, was he like uh, he's Piers not, Brosnan? Was he a Piers Brosnan or? No, he used to be a Starsky and Hutch. He was my Starsky. Mm. He used to be, but you know, he's 65 <sighs> years old, so. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, I'm asking is, did he let himself go as well? No. Well, just gray hair, but no, he still had oh. his body. Wait, and who's defining let herself go? I think Michelle's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. And you're curvy, and um, well, Learn that's to she was it. talking to me that first time. I'm like, you're not even big. What are you talking about? You're a chublet. Yeah, well, so that's what I'm finding out is that I'm in between on, on what is you're, there. You're, because there's you're what, an 1820? Oh, I love you, actually. I'm a 28. Uh, well. No, you're not. Yes, I am. So, yeah, so you're in the same boat I am. You're you're too skinny for the fat world and too fat for the skinny world. Thank you. And that sucks. It does. It does because I like there's a, there's a couple of gentlemen that I talk with. And, and like, they say, oh, honey, if you were enough. just 100 pounds more, you would be my dream. So, so you were having these self-esteem issues and everything yes, like well. that. And then how did you find the Canadian on, online? I was looking and he had some comments about um, women of size and stuff and nice comments. Uh -huh. And so then we just talked and... Just started chatting, like chat, chat room chatting just or Yahoo right chatting? Right right there and then okay. FB and a little uh -huh. talking on the bottom part and um, helping with self-esteem issues and just nice talk, none of the trashy stuff. And from him and he told me the sites to go on and then I went on some of them and you know they got the women dressed the way they're dressed and that's okay but I was reading the comments and seeing how the men really like them and stuff and from that that helped and then I said okay I think I'm ready to go to an event an actual an event in person live event event and go there and so then that's when I would meet you and I and she says oh yeah there are men that just love my arms and I'm like yeah well my right here I'm wearing turtlenecks and everything trying to hide everything. and I have the biggest fucking arms I could Fly, you know, yeah. and baggy shirts. I mean, I've gone through a total different wardrobe change. Isn't it great? It's Don't you feel great. so good about yourself? It now? is. It is. It is. By the way, the black dress is stunning. The dress is stunning. So, but thank you. But so that's 
from listening to you and how you encouraged um, me was amazing. And I said, okay, so we got to go and just start encouraging myself. And so a, a month later, you were even more uh, out there, and then yes. a month later, you were even more yes. out there, and now you were just you've seen her blossom for the yeah. over the last year, so and yeah. some help from some other guys, right? right? Just talking with them, and um, and what about other ladies? Uh, there are a lot. Of, you have a lot. Of, you have a I circle have, of friends. I have I know. a circle of lady friends. Uh -huh. Yeah, and and um, there's a one lady that you guys have all met, Andrea. Yeah, she was on the show. Yeah, yeah and she's show. really she's really nice too, and she's giving lots of words of encouragement too. So, but um, just getting out there and. Causing trouble and having fun, and, uh, <laughs> and now you're bringing your daughter into the group. Her daughter's very nice, very she's yeah, very beautiful. Your she daughter is, is God, I love her. But she covers herself from head to toe, and she's a chublet too. Like she's not a big girl, you know. She's a, a she's little a big bigger. Girl. She's than, actually way thinner than me. She's lost uh, sixty some odd pounds. Yeah, tall, but she's beautiful. But yeah. she's covered from head. I can't really tell her shape because she's always got big. Big clothes on. But I'm working on her, Michelle. I, I know. Every week, I, every time I see her, I'm like. Yeah, she always hides her arms because she doesn't like them. And I say, I understand and that there are plenty of women out there whose arms are bigger. I would just like to see her. I mean, show her arms. But I'd like to see her wear something a little more form-fitting to show that yeah. that shape, those curves she's got. She's so. But we're working on her. We'll get we're her there. We're working on we'll her. We'll get her there. Spanx. Absolutely. Spanx and that's it? Yeah. I agree. That's yeah. why I got my leggings. And <laughs> I don't wear nothing under them. But why is it that guys just think because we're of a size that we're an easy mark? And that's a, and even on the computer, if you just, like, talk to me, well, it's not like, hello, talk to you, and now let's go. Well, Because big girls allow them to be. Think, well, I well think it. back to before you met uh, Nick and how you were feeling about yourself. And if a guy comes up, to, came up to you and said, "Wow, you're so pretty," and I, I'd say, "Uh huh," and walk away. <laughs> well, not, no, no, but not all women would be like that. Most women would like, "Oh my God, this guy is paying attention to a, me. A vast, I better sleep with him." A vast majority of women will absolutely, even the smallest kindness, translates into them into an interest relation emotionally. And, and I will tell you something that it, it's not that's not limited to big women. No. no, that's limited to every. We've had all size woman. women in this room, and they've all told us that it's the same oh. kind of oh, it's situation. break time. It is. Time We're going to take a little break right now. <laughs> We're going to be back with Michelle. We got lots to talk about. Um, this is the curvaceous bounty of Sin City on Vegas All Net Radio. We'll be right back. <laughs> 